let's discover a way to really elevate your handmade cards with my shadow heat embossing technique. I'm Lou Collins and on my channel I've recently been sharing with you a lot of technique videos with a load of crafting tips and techniques. But in this tutorial video I would like to create a complete birthday card with you and explain the process as I do so. We will be using Distress Ink Oxides, rubber stamping, heat embossing and looking at colour swatching too. Mostly I want to share with you how I make my heat embossed images really pop on my cards by adding contrast behind them. I'm sure you will find the end result inspiring but learn lots along the way too. As always any craft tools and materials I use will be linked in the description below and if you enjoy this tutorial please do hit the subscribe button and share with your crafty friends. So for this technique I'm going to be focusing on my textures, geometrics, dragonfly and floral stamp set. So this is two parts, I'm going to be using the dragonfly side, the floral side, you can absolutely do this technique with as well. Now I've already put this inside my stamping platform and today I'm going to be working on watercolour cardstock because we're going to be using Distress Oxides in a watercolour fashion. So I have got some watercolour cardstock here, my favourite watercolour cardstock is linked down below. So I've trimmed it down so that I've got a card base and I've got a panel to fit on the front uh, with a border around. So this is around about 5 by 7 inches. I'm going to place this into my stamping platform and just place the stamp on here like so. So first thing we need to do is heat embossing. If you've never seen heat embossing before make sure you check out this video here that talks you through the very basics of heat embossing. I'm just going to use my pressure tool to make sure that the stamp is adhered to the platform really really well and then I'm going to take a clear ink. So I use Versamark, this is one of my favourites. To be honest I find a lot of embossing inks all very similar this technique actually looks absolutely amazing if you're doing it with uh, florals for example. So then take my pressure tool again and go all over the image. Now because I'm going clear ink onto white cardstock it's actually really hard to see uh, where you've gone with the ink. So uh, the best way to see, I've actually, you can see I've already got some ink left on there from a previous impression. Um, but you can see that's actually really good. But if you hold it up to the light, usually you can see the shine of the clear ink. I'm just going to add a little bit more in the centre of this triangle here. It didn't quite take as well as I'd like, but it's not too far off. That's much better. Okay, so having a slightly dirty ink uh, or stamp is actually really helpful for being able to see where you've put your clear ink and I'm going to be going over this with white embossing powder so it doesn't matter that I've got a little bit of colour under there. The top tip actually if you are going to be heat embossing and you're worried about not being able to see with the clear ink where you're going but you're not going to be using a clear ink you can use absolutely any colour of ink as long as it's a slow enough drying one for you to put your embossing powder on. So just tipping my embossing powder off there and I'm not going to be tapping this. Usually what I would do is I would tap it from behind and any little speckles of embossing powder there, I would lose, they would pop off. Um, you can see a few round here, a few round here. I didn't use my anti-static bag for this reason because I didn't want to lose, I didn't want to lose those, I want those to stay there. Um, so usually I'd tap those from behind so they come off but I'm going to leave them this time. I quite like the kind of splattered look now I'm going to take my heat gun and I'm going to heat set all of this powder. Now while that melted powder is cooling down, ready for us to colour over the top, we can start thinking about our colour combinations and this is where I like to use swatching. So I've got a small piece of the cardstock that I'm going to be using for my base and I think it's important to use the same sort of cardstock as your base and not just any old scrap piece of white or ivory coloured cardstock because this way you get a true result with how the colours look on the correct colour base. So I've got my watercolour cardstock here. Now here's some swatches that I started doing, so I'm going to show you these. I've actually got three Distress Oxide colours on here already. I have Black Soot, I have Brushed Corduroy and I have Speckled Egg. Now I've switch swatched these, switch swatched them. <laughs> 
I'm just going to do it again for you so you can see them. So there's my brush corduroy, there's my speckled egg, and lastly, there's my black soot. Now don't forget, black soot within um, Distress Oxides is not really black, it's more of a dark grey, a charcoal colour. Now, you've got a little bit of shine on the speckled egg there, so I'll just lift that up so that you can really see the true colours. There we go. Now, I love those together. I would use only a tiny bit of the um, brushed corduroy and a lot more of the speckled egg, but I still feel I'd need a bit more of a blue in there. So I'm also going to swatch Stormy Sky. And the way I do this is I just simply take a resistant mat and I just kind of smooch a little bit of color on there. And I'm also going to try Salvaged Patina as well which I love. You don't need a lot of these. Um, really, I'd only do a large amount if I feel that I'm definitely going to be using them because I don't want to waste them. I usually just do one or two little sprays of color, uh, sorry, of water on there. And then I mix in with my brush and swipe onto my cardstock. It's a good idea to also let these dry before you actually decide on your colors and which ones you prefer because they do definitely change color as they dry. There we go, so there's my color mixes. Um, I do think I'm going to use a little bit of the salvage patina that I had there, um, not too much of the brushed corduroy, and I do like these blues together. So um, we're going to see how the three actually mix in. Now the first thing I'm going to do is lightly spritz my watercolour cardstock over my heat embossing there with some water, just a light mist of plain water. This is just going to help the ink move around. Now I'm going to be using a very small blending mat, you can use a piece of plastic packaging, a piece of acetate for this. The smaller the better because you can really control where the ink is going. And I'm going to be putting, first of all starting with speckled egg, being one of the palest colours, I'm going to put some of this down first and then work from there. So I'm going to spritz this also with water to loosen it up and start the movement there. And then I'm going to bring it over to uh, our heat embossing and I'm going to start smooching this on. And that's just simply pressing and lifting up and moving that around on the watercolour cardstock. Now I'm not going to be cleaning my blending mat throughout, I'm just going to keep layering on top. Next is going to be some Stormy Sky. I don't want to do too much of this, so I'm going to just stick with one little smooched area there, and I'm going to press this down in a couple of areas. Just a little, like so. I think that's uh, probably enough of that one. So I will now give this a little bit of a wipe and just use the plastic to push the ink around into the speckled egg. I'm going to repeat that process with salvage patina. Now I really think that if I was to do the smooching with the brushed corduroy, I'd be adding far too much, far more than I want on there. So I'm going to just add a little bit to my mat and just spritz that with some water. And to lightly spritz this again and I'm actually going to use my paintbrush here just to pick up some of that color and flick it over in places so this is just adding a little bit of the yellow or browny yellowy color where I want it a little more precise and definitely not too much I'm also going to do exactly the same with a little bit of the um, black soot. Not too much of this, because we're going to be adding a lot more black in a moment. Just a touch there. So I've got lots of speckles, lots of texture going on. But as you can see, it's quite hard to see the embossed image even still, even with all that color. So let's get this thoroughly dry. So now to make this image really stand out, I have dried the surface of this because I'm going to add more water, but it's going to be in specific places. I'm actually going to bring in a Distress Ink rather than an Oxide now. Um, Distress Ink is much darker than Distress Oxide in the black soot. Oxide is more of a charcoal color, as I mentioned earlier. Now, this way, if you're a little bit worried about adding contrast to something, maybe start with an Oxide, try that, and then if you're happy with the result, try with the ink instead. So with the wet paintbrush and with my ink watered down there, I'm just going to go uh, along around the outside of some of these lines. 
So I'm going to work in small areas at a time, so just pick out a few lines first of all and just wet around them and then pick up some of my black and just run along here. So just touching the edge of the embossing, you should find that the embossed image totally resists and the colour will only spread into the background image here. There we go. Now already you can see how that's starting to highlight um, the main image. I'm just going to add a little more water underneath to make sure that spreads where I want it to and I'm going to first of all start by going around the main image. If you find your black's becoming too watered down with putting the wet paintbrush into it, just add a little more to your mat. So there I've gone round the uh, outside of the main image with the water and then the black ink, just dipping it into the water lines. I've done the same around these triangles at the top and bottom as well. And now to really make this pop, I'm going to do it again with slightly slimmer lines and even more of the black ink. There we go, so that's made that stamp stamped image really stand out now, really pop, give it shadow and dimension simply by adding that black outline. Um, I think it looks really lovely. Now just a tip for you, if you've got some harsh lines such as around the bottom here, which I've just left them to be able to show you, I'm just going to take some clean water and just run clean water around the edges of them. Just give that a moment uh, and that will, on its own, that will just start to fade those edges out and blur them a little bit. So you don't need to do much besides run some some clean water over those and let that do that own thing. So once this is completely dry and you're happy with it, you can mount it onto your card base. Now putting this on my card base, I kind of feel like it needs uh, an outline, a frame around it. So I'm going to take my uh, Distress Oxide with a blending brush and I'm just going to edge around the outside of here to give it a little bit of a vignette. Hopefully you can see there the difference that a little bit of inking around the edge has made. Now I'm just placing a sentiment here off centre just at the base of the dragonfly there and this is from my textures sentiments for all paper pack where I can cut either a black or white sentiment from lots of different phrases and that is the finished card. So if you enjoy the techniques that I've used please do leave me a comment, ask me any questions you like and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible and please do do a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you everybody, take care, I'll see you again very soon.